Are you bored of the same old Aristocrats deck and you just want one with new twist on it? Are you a fan of the Enchantress archetype but think Selesnya is for hippies? Do you find yourself smirking every time you make your friends angry over a card game? Well, my friend, look no further because you're absolutely right about all of those things and this video is for you. Welcome to the Uncommon Commander, everyone. My name is Ryan, and I'm your host for the next 15 minutes. That's your second torment of the day. This video is a special video because this is actually a double feature. I built today's deck out, but then I also found another cool way it could be built using most of the same bones, but with a different win condition. So your third torment of today will be having to see two deck techs instead of one. But with so many torments to endure, let's not waste a moment. Today's commander is a lady that loves voodoo just as much, but is even better dressed than David Bowie, if that's even possible. Her name is Lind, Cheerful Tormentor, and she is a 4-mana Grixis-colored legendary creature human warlock with a 2-4 body and 3 abilities. The first ability is the keyword ability Death Touch. She also has, whenever a curse is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return it to the battlefield attached to you at the beginning of the next end step. And her third and final ability says, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may attach a curse attached to you to one of your opponents. If you do, draw two cards. This is a good place to note that curses that you attach to another player are still controlled by you, so you, and only you, can sacrifice them. This Mama Jama is one vindictive cat. As you can see, she's the cause of the unluckiest planeswalkers, Unlock. And you know, I have a friend that actually looks a little bit like the Unluckiest Planeswalker, so it's going to be really hard not to just attach all of the curses to him for Vorthos' sake. But really, this deck works its best when you can spread the curses around. That second ability means that when somebody dies, all of the curses attached to them will end up getting attached to you, and that can be crippling if you've attached all of your curses to them. So this deck is going to spread curses around, and it's going to sacrifice a curse each turn in order to draw cards and maintain flexibility, like an Enchantress Aristocrats. Putting a curse on someone never has to be permanent with this deck. Remind your opponents of that, and use it to play some politics. This deck wins by attrition, so that means you need to survive a long time, and politics is a great tool for doing so. So if you've got a silver tongue, by all means, use it. Before moving on to the 99, I want to mention that as of the day I'm writing this script, this deck can be found for $105.37 if you are looking for it at TCG Player. And if you are, please consider buying through my TCG Player link in the video description. I also have a small Patreon if you'd like to support the creation of the videos that way instead, and the link can be found below. Finally, clicking the like and subscribe button is both free and super helpful to my channel. Thanks! So where does Lind live? On these lands. The most important thing to do here is to color fix, because a lot of our enchantment sacrifice outlets require colored mana. So we've got Command Tower, Crumbling Necropolis, Exotic Orchard, Evolving Wilds, and Terramorphic Expanse. We also have some lands that cover up deficiencies with the rest of our deck. These are the utility lands. Bojukabog, Emergence Zone, Ghost Quarter, Tectonic Edge, Haunted Fengraf, Memorial to Folly, and Witch's Cottage. We'll round out our land base with the basic lands, 7 islands, 9 mountains, and 8 swamps. So we've learned that Lind gains her magical power from the hot, watery swamp that she lives in, but to get her out of her quarters, we're going to need some ramp. Because she's a 4 mana card, the best ramp to use for casting her are ramp spells that cost 2 mana or less. These are Curse of Opulence, Soul Ring, Wayfarer's Bobble, Arcane Signet, Demir Signet, is it Signet, Racto Signet, and Prismatic Lens. At 3 mana, we have Burnished Heart, Shiny Impetus, and the Celestis. Shiny Impetus does us the favor of also making a target creature unable to attack us. Remember, staying alive is the hardest part with this deck, so this helps. Also, it's an enchantment, and that is relevant. Since this is going to be a war of attrition, you're going to want to start dealing bits of damage early and often so don't hold back on these group slug curses. Curse of Shaken Faith, Curse of the Pierced Heart, Trespasser's Curse, Curse of Leeches, which becomes Leeching Lurker at night, 
Maddening Hex, Torment of Scarabs, Curse of Bloodletting, Curse of Thirst, Curse of Fool's Wisdom, and Cruel Reality. Back to Curse of Leeches for a moment, I want to add that this card does a lot of Lin's work for her, as it becomes unattached from players and then reattaches to players as day becomes night and night becomes day. This allows us to skip having to sacrifice it, and if we want, we can still attach it to ourselves in order to draw cards of Lind. It gives us choices, and that flexibility is useful. Since we're casting so many curses, which are enchantments, it's time to get some extra value from them. For this we have the Slugging Spells, Jury Master of the Review, Grim Guardian, Mayhem Devil, Forgeborn Orides, and Havoc Jester. We also get benefits from Protean Thaumaturge, Scrap Heap, and Thought Render Lamia. These are all here with the thought that they'll help in a game of attrition, and for most of these, it's obvious how they help. The oddest one out is Protean Thurge, but that one will help you if your opponents have a creature meaty enough to protect your life total for a long time. Do they have Alicia Sanguine Tribune? Cool, swing in for some lifelink damage. Avacyn Angel of Hope? Make your blockers indestructible. Brave Titan? Well, now you've got a Death Touch creature that creates chump blockers. Since we're cursing people, it's time to start removing those curses so that we can draw cards and reuse them. Our sacrifice outlets for our enchantments, among other things, are Claws of Gix, or is it Claws of Jix? I'm not sure. Blood Aspirant, Slaughter Priest of Mogus, Tavern Scoundrel, Infernal Tribute, Dispersing Orb, and Scophos Warleader. As an FYI, Infernal Tribute has an oracle text, and it reads, Pay two mana and sacrifice a non-token permanent draw card. So when it says card in play, it means non-token. That's fine, since none of our curses are tokens. Again, staying alive is the hardest part, so we're running a decent suite of removal and control cards. Our removal consists of Agent of Erebos and Curse of Oblivion for that sweet, repeatable graveyard hate, Curse of Death's Hold and Doomwake Giant to remove your opponent's go-wide armies, and Capricious Efreet, who can potentially remove either a troublesome permanent your opponent controls or one of your own curses. Ah, Random Torments, my favorite kind. Our control spells are Urtai's Meddling, Arcane Denial, Counterspell, Living Refrain, Volras Curse, which is not actually a curse, and Parasitic Impetus for that sweet, sweet survivability. Magic would be a boring game if you didn't have any cards to play with, so we're running a handful of cards to refill our hand more quickly than Lind could do on her own. These are the Loot Spell, Monastery Siege, and the Draw Spells, Curse of Herbosity, Curse of Surveillance, Teferi's Ageless Insight, and Thought Reflection. And we're also running the Recursion Spell, Palace Siege. If instead of the Cons mode you choose Dragons, Palace Siege will just help you survive a lot longer. No Voodoo Doll is complete until it is stitched together. Well, these are the cards that bind this deck together. Curse of Vengeance, Curse of Disturbance, Curator's Ward, Propaganda, and Curse of Misfortunes. These are here to help you survive, and in the case of Curse of Misfortunes, to speed your deck up a little bit. Now before we get into the final five cards of the deck that I actually did decide to build, I wanted to mention the other way of building Lind. We built her as a group slug commander today, but an interesting alternative that I ran across was to build her into everyone's favorite archetype, Mill. If you decide that you want to build her that way, I recommend stripping out most of the group slug cards and putting these in their place. Sage of Mysteries, Jace's Erasure, Curse of the Bloody Tome, Fraying Sanity, Psychic Corrosion, Sphinx's Tutelage, Teferi's Tutelage, Thassa's Devourer, and Alhamrit's Archive. That last one could actually be put into the current build as well, if you prefer, but it does make your card draw a little more dependent on keeping Lind alive, and it isn't an enchantment. Also, you will probably need more mill than this to close out a game. I leave you to figure out what the other mill cards you want to use are. Well, let's change gears and get back to the deck at hand. We have five cards remaining, which means it can only be time for that segment that I have unoriginally named... The Today's final countdown is going to look at the five cards that I find most interesting in this deck. Let's see if you agree. Do you know why enchantments that copy our own curses suck? It's because, once they're in our graveyard, they're not curses anymore. Well, enter Astrid's Invocation, which has this line of text. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may exile this enchantment. If you do, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So without the need to sacrifice it, it naturally comes back under our control, 
at which time we can pick another curse and play for it to be a copy of. Because it's now a curse again, we can give it away with Lind and draw two cards. So in conjunction with Lind, it's a three mana card draw engine. It's pretty sweet. But what if our opponents do the unthinkable and run mass enchantment destruction? Well, if you've got Mayhem, Devil, and a Sacrifice Outlet in play, hopefully they're dead. But now all of your curses will attach to you, and that's pretty awful. But what if instead of your curses attaching to you, they went to your hand? Our number four card, Surprising Bailiff, will do just that, as long as we can sacrifice him or kill him some other way. At number three, we have a card that made it into this segment based solely off of its potentially catastrophic effect. The card is Curse of Obsession, and as long as you can keep sacrificing it, you'll get to draw two additional cards on each of your turns. The rub is that you'll have to sacrifice it before your end step begins, because even if you give it away with Lind at that time, its ability will still be on the stack. Alternatively, you could choose to give it away during your upkeep before your draw step. You'll lose out on the card draw, but your opponent will almost certainly have to discard their hand. It's dangerous, it's effective, and it's definitely going to torment someone. At number two, we have a card that helps us double our effectiveness. This card is the enchantment, Paradox Haze. If you choose to enchant an opponent with this, you will be letting them draw an extra card, but you'll also be doubling the effect of each curse that triggers at their upkeep. If you instead choose to enchant yourself with it, you'll not only be able to draw the extra card from the extra upkeep step, but you'll also be able to give away two curses instead of one with Lind which will draw you four cards instead of two. Paradox Haze is cocaine for your deck, and baby, the 80s are coming back. And I guess this means we're down to, or maybe up to, our most interesting card in the deck. This one is sure to be the final torment. So let's make sure we're working some voodoo with a curse. A big one with a great big effect that is sure to be terrifying for you, for your opponents, for everyone. This card is Curse of Echoes, and whenever the player it's enchanting casts an instant or sorcery, each other player may copy that spell and may choose new targets for the copy that they control. Maybe you'll get a ramp spell, maybe you'll get to remove something scary from the board, or maybe it'll be a Torment of Hailfire. Like I said, the final torment! Well, that was fun. For me, at least. But if you also enjoyed yourself, and you're looking for additional torments, feel free to browse through the playlist that's showing up on your screen. I also have a Patreon, so there's a torment for your wallet. I'm just kidding, it's not a very expensive Patreon. Remember, leave a like and a comment saying hi. I'm nice, I promise. Now then, I'll see you next time.